Hi. So this is Pathwork Guide Lecture number seven. Decide. Perfection, bliss, fear, trouble. I greet you in the name of God. I bring you God's blessings, my dear friends. I have promised you to give you specific advice, teachings, and hints. Today, I want to start with it. Of course, some of my friends, present or absent ones, are already well on their way, but some still stand at the entrance of the first door. And although I have to start with the very first phase, even those among you who have already passed through the first doors and have advanced quite nicely will find help and guidance. And I will now outline all the problems man encounters in his soul before he has passed the first door. Such a human being will ask himself, why do I need this? Because as yet, he has no inner sight and recognition how enchanting such an inner con contact is or how important it is. Of course, there are a number of methods to achieve such contact. There are certain exercises and with much effort, such a method may lead to some success to free the spirit sufficiently, to have some spiritual experience and attain recognition to a certain degree. But there is only one way that leads to the safest, best success. And this is when the contact with the spirit world, per se, is not the ultimate goal, be it for curiosity or interest, etc. But when it is pursued as a means for a purpose, when it serves man to perfect his inner self and to recognize God's will in everything, the major as well as the minor questions, and to fulfill his will. Let me read that again because that's such an incredibly powerful piece. But there is only one way that leads to the safest and best success. And this is when the contact with the spirit world, per se, is not the ultimate goal, be it for curiosity or interest, etc. But when it is pursued as a means for a purpose, when it serves man to perfect his inner self and to recognize God's will in everything the major as well as the minor questions, and to fulfill his will, his will as in God. Then he is living according to the spiritual laws and on the outer and inner levels alike. When this is the purpose, then utmost help and support will be given by God's spirit world to establish this contact. For you, each emotional reaction, each thought, each opinion and tendency, and every minute fa facet of your personality are invisible ray threads belonging to you and you alone. So let me just read that again because it's complicated. For you, each emotional reaction, each thought, each opinion and tendency, and every minute facet of your personality are invisible ray threads belonging to you and you alone. Thank you. On the other hand, there are fixed yet constantly vibrating spiritual laws holding together in a net of rays, infinite possibilities and modifications of outer and inner reactions. When, therefore, man's personal rays match those held in the net of rays of the spiritual laws, then he fulfills his life, and thus is in harmony and happiness. Where they deviate, he is in disharmony and consequently encounters difficulties, which you often mistakenly call fateful events. The more man removes from the roots of such difficulties by covering up and pushing into the unconscious, the harder it will be to recognize the connections and dissolve or dig out the faulty roots. The more man removes from the roots of such difficulties by covering up and pushing into the unconscious, the harder it will be to recognize the, the connection and dissolve or dig out the faulty roots. So if you want to be happy, you have to find the faulty roots. Not the faulty towers, that's me adding that in, but the faulty roots within. This digging for faulty roots is the path of perfection or purification or healing of the soul, whatever you want to call it. If you desire the contact with God's spirit world for this purpose and this purpose alone, because without it, it is not possible, you will receive, as I said before, utmost help, support, and guidance. Then everything will develop and progress for the individual's best then he is in really good hands. Man also needs outside help and advice when he starts this path to remove the first stones that are blocking the way to his contact 
with God's spirit world. The outer help should, if I may say so, render possible the inner help or must first be given by impressing the outer senses in order to rouse the inner senses to independent action. And this help from the outside can be given by a human being who has reached one of the higher levels on this particular path and or through a spirit of God. Not this, not that this outer help is sufficient and let it not be so. It is only the push and it is the seed which has to be embedded in the soul and take root through your own work to bear fruit. The essential part is that you break through to your inner self. I have told you often, and you know very well, that a human being is never, a human being, ne a human being never just accepts, even if it stands to reason, what somebody else tells him, especially not when an interplay of personal inner unconscious resistances is involved. All truths of creation, all spiritual laws, Everything man is able to comprehend, therefore, must be experienced personally in order to become genuine knowledge and to be personally and productively utilized. It is possible, but only on this path. Inner recognition of any truth can only then be received when the personal contact with God's spirit world, at least to a certain degree, has been established. And this contact can be made when someone in the soul, a breakthrough to the higher self, has been achieved. When you stand before this gate, contemplate this. Don't push it aside. Move courageously to enter the door. Don't waver and turn back or hesitate to decide. Many believe and are of goodwill to a certain degree, but they think it is sufficient that they don't sin. But my friends, what is sin? Somehow every transgression of divine law is sin, whether you or the world recognize it as such, is immaterial. The difficulties man encounters before he enters this door are the effects of such transgressions of certain divine laws and the I cannot decide wholeheartedly is one. This firm decision must be made. It's either a yes or a no. And even your no is better than no decision at all when you realize the consequences and the extent. So it is under such circumstances more appropriate than indecision, back and forth in a maybe. Trying to leave a back door open, persuading yourself that certain material problems pre prevent you from walking this spiritual path. Material problems are, however, the consequences of spiritually wrong attitudes. You all know whether you have entered the door or stand before it. And those who stand before it should ask themselves, did I make a firm decision? Make the firm decision either way. To go with God halfway is to no avail. Your disharmonies will increase because leaving a back door open, you will convince yourself that you are still closer to God than perhaps an atheist. No, this is not so, my dear ones. This is not true at all. Belief in God is inner knowledge and sight, and such knowledge and sight are obligations. And only when you have made this decision Everybody has to search his own soul, carefully consider and contemplate what is at stake here, what the earthly life means, what material problems are in relation to the great spiritual truth, which is superior to material truth. Each one of you should deeply reflect on all these questions and then decide. The first decision will bring some peace already. So this should be your first meditation. Those who believe that they already know how to meditate and pray and thus think this does not concern them when I speak of the first meditation should know that I mean the first meditation that leads to the actual and complete decision either or. Man is always trying hard to avoid an either or decision and they think they can get away with it. But you cannot. We of God's spirit world who want to help you, love you, are sad when we cannot give this help where, in principle, it would be possible where the soul is mature enough to walk this path. And when we have to observe how difficult you make it for yourself trying to cover your eyes. Now, I want to discuss what it really is that makes it so hard for you to decide yes or no. As much as man regrets his faults, somewhere he loves them and somewhere he does not want to part from them. 
It causes a certain pleasure to give in to them and so, so to speak, surrenders to them. Although he knows that on this path he is supposed to overcome them, he does not want to say goodbye to them. And this is goodbye to the faults. No, at least not with his entire will force. Therefore, man needs to contemplate the truth, which will be revealed to all who are desirous of it, even before the direct contact to the spirit world is established. If you ask God, show me the truth, show me the truth, and you open yourself up to it, you will receive an answer always, but you are so often indifferent. You cover these questions and push them aside. You were so occupied with your troubles and the little daily details that you forget the most important part. When you consider your personal affairs, you must admit that they are superficialities and trifles compared to the great totality of truth. Will the truth and open yourself for it will the truth and open yourself for it. Ask God for recognition. Then you will realize that the pleasure of giving in to your faults is insignificant to, in comparison to overcoming them. Victory over the lower self is not only a momentary, quickly passing well-being, it is more. It brings liberation from tight chains. It brings lasting and growing happiness, true happiness without the bad taste of a bad conscience. This can only be achieved when you walk this path. You cannot make the decision before you have reached into the depths of this recognition. And to achieve this recognition is your first task. Fight hard for it. When you profoundly, not superficially, contemplate my words and ask yourself, should I enter the gate? Should I walk this path? Should I subscribe to God? and his truth wholeheartedly, unconditionally, yes or no, then you have accomplished a lot. Half-hearted surrender to God gives the dark forces a leeway to break in somehow. I do not deny that God's grace will intervene when you have acquired credits from good deeds, etc., in a former or in this present life, but the dark forces are lurking in all directions, and they are especially on the lookout for the human beings who are just pondering the decision as to whether or not to walk the path to God. More, much more than for those who are not yet that far in their soul maturity. Look at the question from this angle too, my dear friends. Then decide on your next move. We know exactly to whom this applies and who is beyond it. The next decision that has to be made to establish this connect this contact, excuse me, with God's spirit world, after your decision was yes, is to devote time daily. If you are not willing to do this, you cannot expect to accomplish much. Everybody will be able to take out the time as busy as he may be. And it is just a matter of will, attitude, and organization. So when you have made this decision, you know that you have to pay a price. So ask yourself, what do I want? What will I receive on this path? What is the purpose? What must I lend myself to? And what, what must I relinquish when I walk this path? What if I decide against it? The price for the happiness of this path is willpower, patience, stamina, discipline, and a certain amount of time. And that price is truly not too high. When you have met these basic conditions, you have removed the principal obstacles. Now, you can start building. And when your desire to perfect your inner self and face your truth is sincere, then you will receive spiritual help, ever expanding as you go on, being guided to outside help through your own recognition and perception, which are answers and hints. This connection with God's spirit world is commonly called mediumistic contact. But not every human being must necessarily become a medium like the one through whom I speak. But you all can establish a contact with God's spirit world in some way. So be open to it. Do not say, I want the contact in this way or that way. Just be open and follow the guidance you receive. And then it will manifest at the time and in the way that is best for the individual. Many things will change in the life of a human being who walks this path, who has surrendered to God unconditionally, not only by mouth promise, but also by action. 
But these changes will come slowly, step by step, and gradually as a natural outcome. This is the magnificence. It seems to come of itself. And in this attitude of complete surrender, nothing will happen that could be detrimental or disharmonious. But man must contribute by being open and sensitizing the inner antenna. This faculty will also be awakened. And I will give you no further instruction today as to how to establish this contact with God's spirit world. I want to proceed systematically because if I give too much to my friends who are all still standing before the gate, they cannot make use of it. So when I see that no further in this respect, instructions in this respect are necessary, I will continue and make known to you what is required for the next phase. This is the only basis which is essential the contemplative cons excuse me the contemplative consideration of what is for and what is against the decision the decision itself the surrender the meditation about all that is involved here and now i want to give you some general instruction there are many questions where man thinks this is right because the opposite is wrong. But here, as I have often stated, in such cases, both extremes are wrong. To be specific, the more a human being advances, the more important it is for him to choose kindred spirits, friends and surroundings that are productive contributions to his soul search. It is necessary to help each other stimulate the soul. Thus, it should be contacts that do not harm the soul, which is often the case with contacts that seem so uninvolved and innocent. But this too should not be forced. Ask for guidance. Will the guidance. Then it will be given to you, wiser, more, magnific more magnificent than you can imagine. And only by your experience will you really be able to fathom the wisdom and magnificence of such guidance. On the other hand, some human beings who have reached an even higher level, having sufficient strength, withdraw altogether from those on the lower level due to the unpleasant experience they encountered with the wrong kind of association, which I have just mentioned. But they should not withdraw altogether. It is right in many cases, and a human being who is trained in the contact with God's spirit world will be advised which contact to keep and which not. And of course, it is required that such questions are asked. So, when you have grown strong, know that you are walking on a safe spiritual ground on this path. There is less danger than the non-kindred spirits. Less evolved human beings will drag you down to their lower level. Instead, you may seek out the possibility to help and influence them. But strangely enough, man reacts in the opposite way because the first reaction is giving in to what is easiest. If contacts with less evolved human beings harm you spiritually, you yourself are still on a level where you don't find them unpleasant. And thus, you do not want to give them up in reality. Then you persuade yourself that you are able to help these less evolved souls with your recognition, while in fact, you are not yet capable of it and you get weakened. You should surround yourself with friends who strengthen you. And if you are really certain that such contacts can no longer harm you, they may constitute in their disharmonious vibrations tests to enforce your strength. And then you have reached the point that such contact with less evolved beings is a sacrifice. And consider that man wants to surround himself with kindred spirits and shies away from unpleasant ones. He has a tendency to apply, in general, that which he has experienced, which is right, which was right for him, and that contact with less evolved beings is harmful per se. But which, on the higher level, a slightly different is slightly different, excuse me. That was kind of confusing, wasn't it? Let me reread that. Consider that man wants to surround himself with kindred spirits and shies away from the unpleasant ones. He has a tendency to apply, in general, that which he has experienced, which is right, which was right for him. That contact with less evolved, that contact with less evolved beings is harmful per se, but which on the higher level is slightly different. 
There may be a mistake involved. A task may have to be fulfilled with such a weaker human being, which when turning away is missed. And if a human being on such high level is not quite happy when something makes the soul restless, despite the many inner recognitions, he may find the cause in a contact which he has turned down, which he has abandoned, while he was meant to help, fulfill, and to learn from it. So you see, it is not always the same, depending on your level of development. The lower contacts harm your progress. Oh, it is not always the same that the lower contacts harm your progress. Once you reach an advanced stage of development and are not entirely happy, think in this direction. Something like lack of harmony, tell, oh, excuse me, something like this may cause because the soul has yet has then become a, seism, a seismograph that registers the slightest lack of harmony and telling you that something is wrong. That's pretty complicated and I'm not going to reread it. I'm just going to, you know, encourage you to read and listen to this lecture. Um, now my friends, to whom this does not apply, don't persuade yourself that giving up this or that contact which you cherish is necessary per se. It applies to the other extreme, those who want withdrawal because it suits them better. It is an intricate, intricate question. Give yourself an answer. Find out that frequent that find out that frequently that which is hardest to do, most unpleasant, may be what, may be that where your soul search got stuck, where something was not handled too well, depriving you of the true feeling of happiness, which will be yours when you walk this path of light. When you walk this path of light 100% and thus fulfill your life. Think about this. Every one of you may find his grain. Don't act forcibly in anything, but be open for guidance in the right direction. Ask also for guidance, how to open yourself. This is all you need to do. If you are not willing to be guided in this or that area, you cannot receive the guidance and for help and ask for help. How much help man could receive if he would be willing? How much help man would receive if he would be willing and if he would ask? How much happiness, how much bliss he misses? My friends, such are the wondrous forces and rays of the spirit world of God. They want to embrace you. Your reactions make it impossible because your rays vibrate in the other direction. Thus, God's rays cannot penetrate yours. And now I am ready for your questions, and I want to invite new friends if they so desire to ask questions. So I'll only read one, because... Question. I have just read a book by Prentice Mulford, where almost everything agrees with what you say, but there is one thing which I don't understand, and he writes, one should not concern oneself with the negative, especially not with one not with one's own faults, because it reflects the negative. But you said we should face our faults and we should fight them. But in order to fight them, we have to think about them daily. There is a contradiction. There is a contradiction. No, it is answer from the Spirit, from God. No, it is not a contradiction. The how counts. Of course, there are many human beings who bathe in their faults, who have this kind of false repentance, which I mentioned before. They moan about their faults, saying, I am a sinner, I am so bad, I just cannot overcome my faults. How terrible that I have this or that fault. And every time they think of them, they give over to such unproductive current or vibration, and the guilt, feel and the guilt feelings grow. But these guilt feelings, in turn, cause other negative reactions, and thus a whole negative chain reaction sets in. Of course, this is the wrong approach. It, is not, it not only attracts the negative currents, it also involves self-deceit. Such a human being thinks he is humble, while in reality, he wants his own comfort by telling himself it is hopeless. You will find this attitude quite frequently. It is as extreme as the opposite attitude which pictures perfection. A spiritually knowing human being who advises against thinking about the negative currents means this kind. And it is quite a different and inevitable necessity on this path that man learns to know himself, that he faces his truth and accepts it temporarily as a fact. Not meaning he should consider it unchangeable, doing nothing about it. No, he should say, this is me. I have these faults. I know it takes fighting and willpower and patience to get rid of them. But I can 
and I will do it. That is productive. And when you analyze it correctly and touch the sore spot, then you will find out that when man is so terribly shocked about and develop such a guilt feeling over his faults and imperfections, what else is in it? but a certain form of pride and presumptuousness of pretending to be more than he is. Such a human being looks at himself as being perfect instead of undergoing the effort to become perfect and realizing he is not yet perfect. It is a horrible discovery which bothers his vanity. And thus he cannot take himself as he is at that time. And that is the unhealthy part of it. If you follow this with your feelings and think, meditate about it, then you will thereby open more doors. It is always the how. And I have said this before. Of course, once you are able to see yourself with all of your faults without a feeling of disharmony or inner resistance, as an objective observer may see you, then you can build your positive house. But only then. You must build on the foundation of truth. There is no building on lies or untruth. So if you don't know yourself, if you don't want to know yourself or deceive yourself about yourself and your motives, and if you cannot face yourself as you are with ease, you build on untruth. And your motives, and if you cannot face yourself as you are with ease, you build on untruth. But viewing yourself in a relaxed way is genuine humility, which sets the beneficial forces in motion, enabling you to change from deep within, not superficially. And then there is constructiveness. There is recognizing the turning point and the godly essence that is contained in the root, which was twisted by a fault. So this should be pictured and strived for. When again and again speak of this perfection, my dear ones, which you should attain. You vaguely think of gaining this perfection through outside influences or experiences, i.e. to acquire something that is not yet in you. But this is not so. It is a slumbering within you, hidden behind many crusts, as I have told you so often. It is covered by your lower self, but only covered. The perfection exists already within you. Just remove the crusts. To remove the crusts, you have to realize first that they are there. And to accept the fact that they are there as they are and have manifested in a certain form. Then they are they can be sufficiently thinned out to permit to permit the breakthrough to the higher self, even where real blocks prevented the breakthrough. And when you are fully aware that perfection is already in you, you will find it easier to overcome the difficulties and imperfection. And excuse me, you will find it easier to overcome the difficulties and imperfection will no longer keep you in its chains. Set this perfection free, and that is in you, hidden behind many crusts, free. And once you have crystallized the lower self, lying before you like a foreign body, you can start constructing the positive forms which you want to realize. Boy, this is very important. Take, for example, someone who fights egoism. This is a fault that most human beings have to some degree in some shape or form, but each one has only a portion of it. And when in your daily contemplation... <laughs> you know what? I'm going to stop there and I'll finish the last part of this question after my dog stops barking because it's a pretty long answer. <sighs> All right. I'm going to stop here and I'll finish the last part.